The human body needs rest to function properly. Your survival depends on your ability to sleep. A hormone called cortisol has a powerful influence on our sleep-wake cycle. It interacts with our circadian rhythm and sleep cycles. Your body must produce a greater amount of cortisol in the morning and it should drop to its lowest point at midnight. How can you do it? What affects the production of cortisol levels? Stay till the end to find out several ways you can enhance your sleep schedule. Regardless of when you wake up in the morning, one of the first things that happens is that your body temperature is increasing. And that's just going to happen naturally. Some of it is going to be the consequence of your moving around a bit, but really the increase in body temperature is one of the main triggers for why you woke up in the first place. That increase in body temperature in turn causes an increase in the release of a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is often discussed as a stress hormone, but it's not just associated with stress. It also enhances your immune system, provided cortisol is elevated at the right times. And the right time for cortisol to be elevated is when you first wake up in the morning. That increase in cortisol is also going to increase metabolism. It's also going to increase your ability to focus mentally and for you to move your body. So again, cortisol is often demonized and considered this bad thing. And indeed, you don't want cortisol to be chronically or consistently elevated throughout the day or night. But you do want cortisol to reach its peak early in the day, right about the time you wake up. One way that you can ensure that that cortisol peak occurs early in the day, right about the time that you wake up, is to view bright light, ideally from sunlight, within the first 30 to 60 minutes after waking. Our sleep-wake cycle follows a circadian rhythm. Our bodies enter a period of sleep followed by a waking period every 24 hours, which is roughly synchronized with nighttime and daytime. The production of cortisol in the body follows a similar circadian rhythm. It reaches its peak at about an hour after you wake up, around 9 a.m. for most people, and drops to its lowest point at around midnight. Whether or not you live in a cloudy place or a sunny place, whether or not there's cloud cover or not that day, should really strive to get bright light in your eyes, ideally from sunlight, within the first 30 to 60 minutes after waking. The reason for that is very simple. You want to trigger that cortisol increase to occur very early in your day. And you don't want that cortisol peak to happen later, which is what will happen if you wait to get outside and see sunlight. The reason for this is that you have a set of neurons, nerve cells in your eye. They're called intrinsically photosensitive melanopsin cells. Those neurons respond best to bright light and especially right after waking early in the day, they are best able to signal to a set of neurons that reside over the roof of your mouth called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is a cluster of neurons that then sends a huge number of other signals, electrical and chemical, out to your entire body that triggers that cortisol increase, provides a wake-up signal for your brain and body, and sets in motion a timer for you to fall asleep later that night. To increase the production of cortisol in the morning, you need to get exposed to bright light, ideally sunlight. Light exposure can enhance cortisol levels up to 35% in the first 15 to 20 minutes after you wake up, whereas it would not influence you much in the evening or at midnight. Here's what you do, or at least here's what I do. I wake up in the morning and I want to reach for my phone, but I know that even if I were to crank up the brightness on that phone screen, it's not bright enough to trigger that cortisol spike and for me to be at my most alert and focused throughout the day and to optimize my sleep at night. So what I do is I get out of bed and I go outside. And if it's a bright, clear day and the sun is low in the sky or the sun is you know starting to get overhead, what we call low solar angle, then I know I'm getting outside at the right time. If there's cloud cover and I can't see the sun, I also know I'm doing a good thing because it turns out, especially on cloudy days, you want to get outside and get as much light energy or photons in your eyes. But let's say it's a very clear day and I can see where the sun is. I do not need to stare directly into the sun. If it's very low in the sky, I might do that because it's not going to be very painful to my eyes. However, if the sun is a little bit brighter and a little bit higher in the sky, sometimes it can be painful to look at. You need to prioritize getting exposed to sunlight over artificial lights in the morning. It is very important to get your daily dose of sunlight in the morning when the sun shines. So the way to get this sunlight viewing early in the day is to look toward the sun. If it's too bright to look at directly, well then don't do that. You just look toward it, but not directly at it. It's absolutely fine to blink. In fact, I encourage you to blink whenever you feel the impulse to blink. Never look at any light, sunlight or otherwise, that's so bright that it's painful to look at because you can damage your eyes. 
But for this morning sunlight viewing, it's best to not wear sunglasses. That's right, to not wear sunglasses, at least for this morning sunlight viewing. It is absolutely fine to wear eyeglasses or contact lenses, so-called corrective lenses. In fact, those will serve you well in this practice or this tool because they will focus the light onto your neural retina and onto those melanopsin intrinsically photosensitive ganglion cells. If your eyeglasses or contact lenses have UV protection, that's okay. There's so many different wavelengths of light coming from the sun and they are bright enough that they will trigger the mechanisms that you want triggered at this early time of day. So try and get outside, ideally within the first five minutes of waking, or maybe it's 15 minutes, but certainly within the first hour after waking. You should know how and what to expose to the sun. Although any exposure to bright light in the morning will be beneficial for sleep and wakefulness, it is light exposure to the eye that matters most. When you're sleeping, your eye's retina is turned off, which is extremely sensitive. Your eye sends a wake-up signal to the retinal pigment epithelium in the eye, which relays a message to the anterior pituitary gland that releases hormones such as testosterone and growth hormone in the morning. I want to share with you three critical things about this tool of morning sunlight viewing. First of all, this is not some woo biology thing. This is grounded in the core of our physiology. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of quality peer-reviewed papers showing that light viewing early in the day is the most powerful stimulus for wakefulness throughout the day, and it has a powerful positive impact on your ability to fall and stay asleep at night. So this is really the foundational power tool for ensuring a great night's sleep and for feeling more awake during the day. Second of all, if you wake up before the sun is out, you can and probably should flip on artificial lights in your internal home environment or apartment or wherever you happen to live if your goal is to be awake. If you wake up at four in the morning and you need to be awake, well then turn on artificial lights. Once the sun is out, however, once the sun has risen, then you still want to get outside and view sunlight. Some of you will wake up before the sun comes out. And if you're asking whether or not turning on artificial lights can replace sunlight at those hours, unfortunately, the answer is no. Unless you have a very special light, we'll talk about what kind of light, the bright artificial lights in your home environment are not I repeat, are not going to be sufficiently bright to turn on the cortisol mechanism and the other wake-up mechanisms that you need early in the day. Being exposed to artificial light, such as bulb or lamp, would not be as efficient as sunlight. It won't trigger the important mechanism of your body effectively. If you wake up before the sun is out, you may use artificial light to kickstart the production of cortisol. However, you must go out as soon as the sun rises. The diabolical twist, however, is that those lights in your home or apartment, or even on your phone, are bright enough to disrupt your sleep if you look at them too late at night or in the middle of the night. So there's this asymmetry in our retinal, our eye biology and in our brain's biology, whereby early in the day, right around waking, you need a lot of light, a lot of photons, a lot of light energy, and artificial lights generally just won't accomplish what you need them to accomplish. But at night, even a little bit of artificial light can really mess up your so-called circadian, your 24-hour clocks, and all these mechanisms that we're talking about. So if you wake up before the sun is out and it's still dark, please turn on as many bright artificial lights as you possibly can or need, but then get outside once the sun is out. On cloudy days, you especially need to get outside. I repeat, on cloudy days, overcast days, you especially need to get outside and get sunlight. You just need to get more of it. During cloudy days, you need to be exposed to sunlight longer than on sunny days. You should not do it through the windshield of your car or the windows in your home. Almost 97% of UVB rays are blocked by glass and virtually all automobile glass blocks UVB rays, which enhance the production of cortisol in your body. Now, how much light and how much light viewing do you need? This is going to vary depending on person and place, literally where you live on earth, whether or not there's a lot of tree cover, whether or not you're somebody who has sensitive eyes or less sensitive eyes, it's really impossible for me to give an absolute prescriptive, but we can give some general guidelines. In general, on a clear day, meaning no cloud cover or minimal cloud cover, you want to get this sunlight exposure to your eyes for about five minutes or so. Could be three minutes one day, could be seven minutes the next day, about five minutes. On a day where there's cloud cover, so the sun is just peeking through the clouds or it's more dense cloud cover, you want to get about 10 minutes of sunlight exposure to your eyes early in the day. And on days that are really densely overcast or maybe even a rainy, you're going to want to get as much as 20 or 30 minutes of sunlight exposure. Get outside, 
if the weather is really bad or for whatever reason, safety reasons, you cannot get outside, well then I suppose try and get near a window. That would be the last, last resort. Are you struggling with your sleep-wake schedule? Let us know in the comment section below. If you found this video interesting or helpful, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and press the notification bell so you won't miss any of our future uploads. Until then, take care.